Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be looking at IPC 4761 biotypes. Now, we received a question on a video asking to explain this topic, and so I'm very happy to do that today. We're gonna learn about all seven types of vias defined in IPC 4761. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started talking about via types, let's take a look at that viewer question. Essie Hall writes, great, could you refer a video of yours talking about IPC 4761? Well, we haven't done a video about that in the past and that's why we're gonna do it today. First, before we get started talking about the different via types and what they all mean, what is IPC 4761? The IPC 4761 standard is a design guide for the protection of printed circuit board vias. So when we say via protection, we're talking about things like filling, cap and fill, uh, fill with solder mask, things like that. There are seven different types of via protection mechanisms that are defined in the standard. So if we scroll down here to the table of contents, you can see here that they define them all as different types. And here you can see in section five, we have type one, type two, so on, all the way up to type seven. The standard also specifies different materials that are used for protection. For example, non-conductive or conductive epoxies, which can be used to fill a via and thus protect it from any sort of contaminants or from solder wicking through both sides of the board. It also specifies processes for bumping and dimpling, and of course, removal of bumps and removal of dimples should they occur. And it also defines planarized structures, as you can see here in the microscope image in the table of contents. So now let's jump onto the board and I'll discuss the different types of IPC 4761 vias. So first, let's take a look at a type one via as defined in IPC 4761. So here, if I draw out a typical via, we've got some signals and stuff here in the inner layer, and I draw out the other side, you may have a situation where you want to protect this via. Now, protection could mean many things. It could just mean I wanna protect the copper walls from exposure to some substance, or I want to, let's say, prevent solder from wicking through from one side of the board to the other. That's a pretty typical usage of, of covering. Well, what you can do is create a type one via. And I would say this is the most common type of via as defined in IPC 4761. This is where we would just take solder mask and cover it over the hole. And in particular, this is a type one A via as specified in IPC 4761. You can do this and just have it covered on one side. So let's suppose you had a QFN component that you were going to solder down here on the bottom side and this via were located in that die attached paddle that you have on the bottom side of the QFN. You're normally gonna solder that pad onto the board, but of course you wanna ensure that all of that solder stays on this side of the board with the component. You could cover just that other side, and of course if any solder does wick into the via, ideally this solder mask should hold that solder inside of the via and prevent it from leaking out to the other side of the board. Normally when you tent vias, it's a good idea to just tent both sides. So we have solder mask down here as well. And this forms a type 1B via. So pretty simple. You can just apply this in the properties panel in Altium Designer. Now, what if we need some additional protection for this type of via? Well, we can form a type 2 via under IPC 4761. A type 2 via just uses an additional layer of protection over this tented via. So for example, if we just have one side tented and then we apply this additional covering layer over the top of that, we would then have a type 2A via. And then if we tent the other side as well, and then we apply that same covering on the bottom side, we would then have a type 2B via. So these are the first two common types of specialized protected vias that are defined in IPC 4761. Now, of course, you will notice that all of these are unfilled. The next protected types of vias are all filled vias. So let's take a look at those. Next, let's talk about type three vias. So in a type three via, this is the first via where we apply any sort of fill material to try and fill up one side or the other side of the via. What we typically do is apply a non-conductive epoxy in either a printing or a screening process, and that just fills up this top area of the via. So this would be a type 3A via, and hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. 
when we just have this one side covered, of course, the rest of this is left open. And suppose, again, you were soldering on this side of the board. You could have some solder infiltrate into this area of the via, but of course, because you have this via partially filled with this material, you don't get a lot of solder loss into the via. Now, what happens if we fill up the rest of this via on the bottom half? Well, we then have a type 3B via. Now, as you can see, a type 3B via structure leaves some region here in the middle that is totally unfilled. This is because the screening or rolling process for applying this material does not fully fill up this via. You could leave some air entrapped in here. And there are situations where you wanna have much more robust fill of this via all the way through. Now let's take a look at a type four via. Now a type four via is an extension of the type three via in that we also use a non-conductive epoxy typically to fill up just this top half of this via. This is gonna be our type four A via because again, that same pattern here. Now, if we also apply another material over the top to then protect and cover this non-conductive epoxy, we've just formed our type 4A via. So this is similar to the transition that we had going from 1A to 2A. In 1A, we just had tenting, and then in 2A, we applied this additional covering layer over the top. Same thing going from 3 to 4. With 3A, we just had the, the top side filled with the, the epoxy, and then when going to 4, we apply this additional covering material. Now, what about 4B? Well, in a type 4B via, of course, we then replicate this down to the bottom side where we fill this bottom half with that non-conductive epoxy. And then here on the bottom side, we apply our covering material to protect this epoxy layer. And this will help protect any of this epoxy in this via from, for example, exposure to solvents that might dissolve that epoxy, also protects them from any damage, and of course, gives all of the same benefits that you saw in the type 2 via, thanks to this extra protective layer. So now let's look at a type five via. So in the previous types of vias, we had either the entire barrel unfilled or only partially filled with some material. This is the first type of via where we want to totally fill up that via barrel. And we're gonna fill up that via barrel with a conductive or non-conductive epoxy. So this type five via attempts to fill up the entire barrel with a roll process or a screen process or with a squeegee process. Now, of course, there are some concerns with this process. You could have voiding inside of this via barrel. For example, there could be small air pockets uh, trapped here inside of this material in the via barrel. You could also have a situation where you have over depositing of material on the top and bottom side, and this requires a cleaning or planarization process to remove this excess material and ensure that you get a nice flat surface. Now, that's of course really important if, for example, this were via in pad. If this were via in pad, we might be soldering directly onto this region where we filled up that via. And of course, we wanna make sure it's nice and flat. That way we can form a strong solder fillet on top of that via pad. Make sure that if you are going to do via in pad and you're going to solder directly onto vias, that of course you specify some level of planarity in your fabrication notes. This will let the fabricator know that indeed you do intend to solder onto it. You require a flat surface and they are gonna be responsible for cleaning up that excess material. Now, of course, you could also have dimpling similar to what we saw with the application of solder mask in the type one vias. They also need to make sure that if there is a dimple, they can catch it and then fill it in with any excess material to make sure that both sides of that via are flat. Now we can take this type five via and turn it into a type six via. And you can probably guess how we're gonna do that. What we can do is apply some covering material over the top of this. So if we then put a covering material over this epoxy that we've used to fill up this via, we then have a type six A via. Now, if we then put the covering material also on this other side, we then have a type six B via. Now, what is this covering material that we're using in this type six via? Well, this could be any photo imageable film, basically a solder mask. So this solder mask is basically tenting this filled via. So we have a tented filled via, and that is a type six via. Next question is, why would we want to use this type of via? Well, if we were to fill this in entirely with a conductive pace, of course it is now electrically conductive, and so the current handling capability for this via goes up. 
That is useful in situations, for example, where you have this on a power rail and you need to transfer power from one layer to another layer. Using that conductive fill is gonna ensure that these vias have the higher current handling that you need to make that vertical transition between two layers. Now, let's take a look at the next type of via, which is an IPC 4761 type seven via. Previously, we showed the conductive or non-conductive fill, and we have that same kind of fill in the type seven via. The difference is that we can then apply a metal plating over the top of this fill, and that gives us a type seven A via. If we then want to have a type seven B via, we then apply that same metal layer over the bottom. Now, as I mentioned with type five, you could use a type five via for via in pad because of course it is filled all the way through and it provides that protection that you need to keep the solder on one side of the board. However, this is really the preferred type of via in my opinion for via in pad. And that's because you can directly solder onto this region of your via. You're not just confined to soldering onto this region or this region. You can really solder anywhere onto this metal pad. Now, just as we saw with covered vias, when we have this protection over the top of this via, we could have, for example, bumping, where there is excess material protruding out of the top of the covering. Or we could have dimpling, where it basically is concave, and we have insufficient material in this covering. Once again, if you're intending to use these vias for soldering, such as for via in pad, you would wanna make sure that you have a specification in your fabrication notes to apply planarization, and then to make sure that these vias end up being flat. So the fabricator is going to have to apply a process to ensure that, number one, they catch any of those bumps or dimples, and then they can fill those in or smooth those out so that you hit a planarization spec. Now, if you want, you could apply that planarization just to one side of the board or the other side of the board, and you can apply a specification for these different via types selectively to different groups of vias. If you are going to apply these different via types to different groups of vias in the same board, you wanna make sure that you very clearly call out which specific vias need to have this protection applied. Otherwise, if you just leave it open, you're at risk that the fabricator applies the protection to all vias, and then of course that could create a problem that doesn't meet your spec. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. And of course, thank you for your comments and questions. Make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you leave a great question on a topic like this, it might just appear in one of these videos. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to call your fabricator folks. We'll see you next time.